Hello, I'm Ulises Gascon. Welcome to my channel. This video is about Digital Twins Definition Language and this video is part of my series about Azure IoT Hub. Sometimes it's hard to understand, you know, what commands do actually have in this device? Uh, what telemetry I should expect? What is going to be the format of the data and so on? And it's hard, you know, especially when the models are bigger and the capabilities of the device are growing and growing. So basically, the idea of this Digital Twins definition language is to cover that gap, but, that gap, but by providing a very simple JSON definition schemas that you can use, extend, inherit, and so on. I created this proof of concept repository. You have the link in the description below. And what's the content? What are the capabilities that we have inside of this model? So basically, if we have a look here, we have some telemetry, which is important to understand because this is the type of data. So Inside of the telemetry section, we are going to send you about temperature and the temperature is going to be a value, which is going to be a double number. We are going to have a property that the digital twin will obviously have also, which is the device status and it's a string. And also you have a command called reboot. Fantastic. We understand what it's going to do, right? But also it's defining the payload that you need to attach to that command in order to properly work in. So it's going to ask you like, in how many times do you want me to reboot the machine? This is the most basic model that you can came around. It's not going to be easy uh, for you to handle this and your day-to-day -day activities unless you follow some tricks that I'm going to show you now. JSON is cool. It's great for defining things, but sometimes can be super hard to keep and maintain modeling, especially taking into account that we are going to deploy this kind of modeling and devices in the field. Also, Azure provide to us, which is a parser. This parser has the capabilities of taking this JSON and several JSONs also related between them that I'm going to show you in the anthology video. And they allow us to understand this model in more details. You know, so we can see exactly all the properties that inherit from where inherit and so on. So it's super simple once you have a clear idea how to test this thing. So let me show you how I do the test for this thing and also how I do continuous integration for this thing. So you understand when you are doing any change on the model, if this is going to break the actual devices. Okay, so we are now in Visual Studio Code and we have the same model as before you know the telemetry the property the command all is here so for me the most important test and the principal one is to be sure that all the models are well defined based on the dttl spec you know because jsons can be fine but this doesn't mean that is following the spec so i use this uh, official parser azure dttl parser to actually parse that model and see if it throws any error Right? As you can see here, this line 10, when you set up the basic of the parser, I use the default configuration, that way I don't go more details there. I pass an array of models, in my case one, and I expect not to throw. So next thing is how I actually test, for example, a telemetry point. So if we check it out the model, and if you remember, we have a telemetry point that is basically temperature, the name, and we expect a double, right? So I go to the telemetry. I actually, you know, just parse the model. So it's the same logic as you saw in the other test. And I query for the item. So I go to my the generic machine and I look for the temperature property. And I expect to have this property as a double. What happens if I go to the command? So let me show you what happened with the commands. So I have a command called reboot and has a request, right? A property in the payload called delay, which is supposed to be an, a string in this case with the command name. Fantastic. Now, next thing is how I'm going to check the payload. So checking for the payload and having the payload and what I'm going to look for is to have an integer, right? So let me down, let me run the test. So if I do npm test, you will see that the tests are working and they are super fast actually. And boom, we have an error. What's going on? It's say like, well, during the test say that you want to have an integer, but in the schema, surprise, surprise, we have, an, we have an string. Do you remember that trick that I showed you before? So if I made any change on the schema that is not valid, in my case, I will say like the delay is going to be an string. Let's say I want to be delayed for a long time, short time, so on. It's not very logic, right? So I'm going to move to an integer, right? So the good thing also is you see that I have here the possibilities to autocomplete that. I'm going to show you how at the end of the video. But yeah, basically now that I patch my model and, you know, 
the delay is an intriguer as expected let's see what happened when you run the test they are running super fast so you can do some tdd around it uh in my case because i'm recording this video it's taking longer than in your machine but in your machine will be between one to two milliseconds per uh, each test including the parsing so okay now that we saw how you can use test next thing obviously is to build some pipelines so let me show you the pipelines that we have so i created this very basic jaml inside of the workflows inside of the dot github folder right and well the name is not the best check library well can be better and i'm going to trigger this in two moments when a pull request is created against main and when something got merged in main or we push code to main just in case you are not using pull requests and you just do something directly in main which is not recommended but you know uh, can happen so basically you have these two options and then you have the job something that might be uh, slightly weird for you is because I'm using a strategy of matrix so I'm running this pipeline against several versions of node.js I do that because I want to be sure that this model and the library that I'm creating here that exports the model is working for the version 14 16 18 and 19 which are the currently at the moment recording this video available versions of node.js the lts one the ones that are uh, right now healthy and recommended to use soon the version 14 is going to be removed and i'm going to you know patch this ci to run from 16 18 19 and 20 but i will cover that in a separate video the good thing here is as i have the commands i can do npm run ci npm run lint and npm run test so i'm sure that the code is nice i'm using a standard and also that everything is working smooth so if you go to any of the actions you can see here all the matrix build in each of the versions and you see it's taking just around 30 seconds no more including the npm installation uh, i mean the dependency installation which is the normally the heaviest one so congratulations you made it until the end of the video in the next video of this series we are going to talk about ontology which is a super set of using tons of modelings together this kind of sort model but in order of building components inherit relationship between models and so on so it's a little bit more tricky than this one but you will love it as you made it until the end of the video i promise to show you something cool to help you working with this model in visual studio code so there is an extension called dtdl uh, provided already by Microsoft, so you can start it on your Visual Studio Code safely. And it's a very, very good tool when you need to create your own JSON uh, DTDL uh, definitions. I mean, when you are working with your models, it's going to help you tons. Help